was fireborn. A fiery message that's hard to miss. Police are tonight hunting an arsonist who targeted the home of controversial, friendly Geordie's YouTube blogger, Jordan Shanks. It's the second time the property has been firebombed in a week. Obviously, we've done some extremely well, wasn't the same dangerous property reporting place. over the last year, I suppose, of a bunch of extremely powerful people and corporations. There is many people that would want to do that. No one has the record that he has for doing some hard-hitting journalism, and this is his payday. Someone's trying to kill him. In what I now know was a premeditated attack, that at best was intended to terrify me, and at worst was intended to kill me. I would say it was probably intended to kill you. <laughs> like, throwing a firebomb at the house and actually setting the house on fire is less of like an intimidation tactic and more of an attempted murder, I would say. But I feel like in his position, he's got to be very careful with the words he chooses because he's constantly in the crosshairs of every single authority in Australia because he exposes so much corruption. But yeah, this is a very much a step above an intimidation tactic. An intimidation tactic is if you had like someone come to your house dressed as a construction worker, but then it was actually a lawyer serving you like a, a fucking lawsuit. That's an intimidation tactic. This, this is some like hitman shit. There's a resub waffle. But the fire bombers, they forgot to take one thing into account. I'm very disorganized. The night that that happened, I was supposed to be sleeping here. I didn't even have smoke alarms. So there's a very good chance that if I was, I could have ended up like the content you're watching right now. Fire. But I wasn't here because that week I was performing my live show in Melbourne and I forgot my keys while I was down there. So there, criminals outwitted. It reminds me of that quote. He's two steps ahead. Doing, then the enemy certainly can't anticipate our future actions. So I was sleeping somewhere else that night. That's such a beautiful line too. That's the, that's always the cliche on how they beat like an uh, overpowered villain in an anime or some shit who can see into the future. We'll have no plan and we'll wing it. Unpredictability is our best friend. With the fire bombers. Mums. But I will admit, the fire bombers did succeed in terrifying me. And I've spent the last couple of months doing two things apart from the fire bombers. Mums. That's hiding and ruminating. This video is a culmination of that rumination. This is an explanation of who could have possibly have done this to such a small, relatively unknown Australian YouTuber. And hey, if that sounds too dry, well, you kids like Knives Out or whatever, stick around. It's a pretty interesting who done it. <laughs> I do like Knives Out. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I think I got a bit of a spoiler in the description. I think we know who the culprit is, but maybe you didn't see the description, so I won't spoil it. All right. We'll keep, we'll keep it a mystery. We'll, we'll keep it all intact here. Sorry, we're going to have to film the rest Injury here because samurai. this best was getting to us. Um, just in case you didn't know, I'm Australian. I'm from the great state of New South Wales, home to over 8 million people. And compared to other Australian states, New South Wales is a particularly dirty place. We're the gambling capital of the world, we're the cocaine capital of the world, and not in a cool El Chapo way either. We just have a lot of coke users here, the highest per capita nice. in the year, actually. That's pretty cool. For this story, it's important to understand that New South Wales is a state that was created by criminals, and let's be honest, we really have stuck to our roots. During the early stages of our colony, our de facto currency was rum. When an English governor was sent here to attempt to raid it in, we cooed him. Look at him hiding under the bed like he's me. Coward! That's our first political cartoon, by the way. Throughout the 20th wow. century, our police force, political class, That's and the the world had a rich culture of working hand in hand to maximize each other's hustle. And let's be honest, despite numerous inquiries uncovering the extent of corruption and criminal penetration into the institutions of New South Wales, nothing has really shocked the system into radically cleaning up its act. On a completely unrelated note, let me introduce you to the former Deputy Premier of New South Wales, John Barillaro. He's been the topic of many of my past videos. And look, just to be clear, I'm not alleging anything here. Uh, and it is too big of a jump to go from beating a cameraman in public to firebombing a house. That is a big jump, but you're also giving him a lot of credit here with beating a cameraman. This cameraman is fending off this overgrown baby with ease. <laughs> like... This is pretty sad for John Barillaro here. He is, it's, it's like that, uh, like an older brother putting their hand on the head of the younger brother as he's throwing punches that are missing. And he's holding like a 30 pound camera on his shoulder. 
cameraman in public to fire bombing a house. So obviously I'm not saying he did it, but he did do this, wailed on a cameraman. We'll get to that in a second, but first- Not really wailed, he got embarrassed an extremely it bizarre twisting tale. For the new viewers, here's how I made an enemy of basically every powerful one, Mitchell, person in the state. John Barillaro was the equivalent of a lieutenant governor. He was the deputy premier of New South Wales from 2016 to 2021 until he quit, blaming Lucifer. my cyberbullying. How do we get to the point where the most powerful man in the most powerful state in Australia claims that he's decided to resign because of a YouTube beef? That's fucking hype though. Of that's so, that's so nice. videos I was making about nice. the insane land clearing rates in New South Wales because of the actions of John Barillaro's government, led by Premier Gladys Berejiklian, we had an increase in land clearing rates by over 1,300%, making Australia the only developed nation having a global deforestation hotspot next to its name and putting koalas on track for extinction by 2050. So repeatedly, I called Premier Gladys Berejiklian and koala killer over this. In mid-2020, I also interviewed the opposition leader, Jody McKay, where we discussed the government's appalling record. John Barillaro takes issue with this interview and the nickname and decides to white knight for his boss on radio. And I've seen some of these banners online or uh, physically where, you know, they call Gladys, Gladys the koala killer. Obviously, I found that very amusing and did a video that included this impression. Oh, what the f***? She's never even personally killed one koala. The one she backed over was an accident, bruh. Oh my god, what'd you call a koala killer? What the fuck's the body? I don't see no koala. Where's the fucking DNA evidence, bruh? So this guy Dude, really is just day, actually tuned into every YouTuber Deborah that criticizes him. He got calls from sources in New South Wales. He actually might have quit because he got Barrow bullied. Barrow was very shitty at that video. Huffing and puffing, claiming that the impression was racist. I remember this happening because I couldn't believe how stupid the claim was. We we're all thinking, no way is he going to publicly say something about this. And then this article came out. YouTube comedian oh in racist low blow towards Premier. He responded by planting a story in the newspaper that alleged because I did an impression of him, I was racist against Italians and the migrant success story. This is the same paper that posted this cartoon a few months later. Grab this, I'm gonna <laughs> make you an offer fuck? you can't refuse. So inaccurate, there is no way he'd be that tactful in his threat. This is what it actually read. Yeah, I'm threatening you, dickhead. I don't give a f that this is an open line. We couldn't believe it. I think the team and I were in Goldman Subway when we first read it. We were pissing bubs? ourselves. John Barillaro was a man who built a career railing against political correctness. And now he was in an article taking issue with me doing an impression of him and specifically annoyed by the inclusion of the word bros. That's Australian slang for brother slash cousin, usually used by utter legends. The most ironic part of that article is that my family and migrants from a place that less than a hundred years ago was part of Italy. John didn't even bother checking that before throwing out his sob story. So we thought a whiny, sensitive, fat Italian man who also happens to be the most powerful man in the state. Content gold, HBO understood that 20 years ago. So obviously we came up with a bunch of stupid nicknames and animations about him, including the classic Super Manolaro Braz. I can't believe we're at a point where actual politicians care about YouTube beef. That's wild. the countless developmental logging proposals in koala habitat, starving them, fast forwarding their extinction clock, and didn't make any effort at all in an attempt to save their populations. All with the help of my good friend, Yay! By mutilating Labour's Native Vegetation Act, I saw that increased land clearing by 45 percent. But what's the dates? Woohoo! I increased it by 1,300%. Mamma mia! When I discovered the Brumbies were destroying Kosciuszko National Park, eh, bringing what is a bunch a of endangered species to the brink of extinction, I was gonna authorize a call, but then... I realized I could make a $10,000 in donations by allowing them to destroy the park. Woohoo! Everything in my life was going great until... Uh, ooh, what's that days? Branch, 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 branch. Jesus oh, Christ. Someone hurt my feelings. Wow. We also made some merch. <laughs> anyway, Jesus. this is all super auspicious because I swear to God, earlier in the year, unrelated to what this movie, what is a Brumby? realized John Barillaro had this palatial multi-million dollar estate that he Airbnb as a side hustle to his other gig, being the leader of a state. 
we thought it's a wild surely horse. this is the dumbest thing you could do right like especially since the other half of the time it's not airbnb that's where he lives so we thought wouldn't it be good if we film a video on the history of all the shitty things he's done but film it at that airbnb so that's where one of our biggest videos bros comes from which was released in september of 2020 which i've got to say it had a very good twist because as you've probably gathered or haven't because you're that dumb i'm filming at your estate <laughs> and i want you to be the first to know that i in both your guest houses. Oh, Stooge, we tracked the video. <laughs> it's coming from inside the I don't house. know if that's true or not, Wouldn't but that's it? such a fucking flex. This guy actually sounds unbelievably stupid. Like, legitimately, observably stupid. I am believing 100% that his feelings got hurt because Friendly Geordie's made fun of him, and he probably cried. Like, he actually probably did cry and then resigned. That's crazy. Holy shit, that is actually crazy. They came on his pillows. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, again, I I wasn't there to watch him have sex and pound cheeks at John Barillaro's Airbnb or anything. I'm just going to take his word for it. And even if he didn't, he planted the seed of doubt in his head forever now. The guy that makes fun of him also fucked in his beds. So either way, that's that's a W. Thanks to the bits, Phaedrix. Well, that was sweet. Well, thank you for that, Phaedrix. Expect this from me, but I highly recommend this video. Links in the description. Obviously, the video caused quite a stir. Front page news, in fact. Unbeknownst to us Ooh. at the time, and it was later revealed by New South Wales Parliament after that video came out, John was demanding the police conduct a bug sweep of the property. <laughs> Something that would cost the taxpayers 10 And a black light, please. The fact we, paid we need to know if he actually fucked here. Stay at the property. Just imagine how stupid and entitled it is to be Deputy Premier and lease one of your primary residences out to anyone. I never considered doing this before, but say a property developer wants a favour, they could very easily get material to blackmail you. I have an unlicensed casino in my basement. Please don't tell the authorities. Also, if you wrong me, you end up in this secret room. There you go, some unreleased footage from Bruz. More on that at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Anyway, after the release of Bruz, John became increasingly agitated by the videos you were made. What in particular seemed to really bother Holy the Bellaro family. It was called The Italian Job. That was released in November of 2020. It was an expose that detailed how John and his dad, before politics, became the directors of their local Italian club. They then racked up a bunch of unsecured debt and as directors sold the clubhouse property for pennies to a company they directed and owned shares in, thus becoming the landlords. They then jacked up the rent against themselves, forcing the Italian club to go defunct and leaving them with the property as directors of the club they had already sold to themselves for a bargain. Later, they sold that property, formerly owned by the Italian community, to developers making a $700,000 profit. Wow, now that's a migrant success story. And if that's all too complex, full mm. video is linked in the description. But in short, it was just heaps dodge. In another video, I called Barilaro up and attempted to ask him about allegations surrounding him and extramarital affairs. Turns out, John's <laughs> intimate relationships would eventually come under scrutiny oh, no. hearing concerning his boss's John. intimate relationships. But that's a story for another day. I didn't know this at the time. But these videos caused John's office to contact the New South Wales Police Force just days after their release, specifically the Counter-Terrorism and Special Tactics Command. God, what, what a, wow, what a flex. You fucking, you grill the man's cheeks so hard that he called in the Counter-Terrorism and Special Tactics Command. Fucking Jack Bauer had to be put on your case because you bullied this guy's feelings so hard. Jesus Christ. Now, and now I think he fucked someone that's not his wife. Now, I mean, I know nothing about him or the case, but now because he called in fucking CTU, the counterterrorism unit, now I think he absolutely cheated on his wife. He went too hard to prove he didn't. Now I know, now I feel like he's covering something up.
You see, you gotta, you gotta, there's a fine line between, like, a proper response and an overkill. And when you reach overkill, you're basically already guilty. <laughs> oh, no, John. Tactics command. New South Wales police then set up a dedicated strike force to put surveillance on us. A YouTube channel. That's right. In Australia, our terror police go after YouTube channels. It was called Strike You're Force Wyargent. You're a menace. YR a menace. They what had the to. Is Wyargent? Why couldn't they have just called it what they were targeting? Strike Force Beat Cop. I told True. You that's a better name. Story, but it gets Deep stranger. Throat. At the same time this is happening, John's also contacting defamation lawyers, who we have also confirmed were at some point in contact with the Strike Force surveilling us. The defamation lawyers draft up this absolutely He's schizophrenic letter detailing all of John's grievances with the videos I made, including that I called him a greasy little scrotum. He needed that to was too a record far. on that one. Let everyone know that's not true. This letter gets sent to me just a few days before Christmas of 2020. And because I'd like you lucky Americans, we don't have your First Amendment in this country. Someone can very easily take you to court for calling them a stupid fat idiot, which was something else that the lawyers <laughs> whinged about in this letter. The first few months of 2021 go by and they were pretty quiet. Seeing insults in writing on a legal document is crazy. On behalf of a guy that we exposed and made fun of. But we know we have to respond to this nutty letter at some point. So we thought... What better place than a university forum that Barilaro is speaking at? We pay him a visit. He tells us to f*** off. This is all detailed in the video Bruz Eternal, which goes through all of the contents of the legal threat we got. The video has now been taken off of YouTube, I think because we advertised the greasy little scrotum key rings we were selling. Uh, you can still watch that video on yeah, our website, though. That'll get the you. Obviously, this exchange jolted Jones and Defo into action, and they filed in the federal court leaking this fact to the press before we even knew. I had to find out in the press. What am I, a murder victim? Jesus, it's like the night crawlers coming before the cops. Oh, and side note, for his lawyers, he got attorneys who at the time were representing alleged war criminals and a barrister who was just prohibited okay. by court from acting for a client, another one of Australia's most colorful politicians because of a conflict of interest. Only the best around this That's time, the Avengers. That's the A-team. That while I was away Jesus on Christ. tour, the police came and visited my house. I thought, that's quite bizarre. So I get my lawyer, Mark, to call up the police, who at first deny that there was any visit at all. And only after Mark quotes a time and date does he get transferred to the Counter-Terrorism and Special Tactics Command, specifically the Fixated Persons Unit, a unit set up in the wake of a deadly siege in the centre of Sydney. Basically, this unit's MO is to stop lone wolf terrorists. People like, I don't know, Joker or Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver. That's literally me. A bigger threat than the Joker, the I'd argue. The police officer there informs Mark that he had He's a something far my stronger. arrest and he was at my house to arrest me, but I wasn't there. So the police seemingly had time to think, walk back from the brink, and were apparently awaiting legal advice. Anyway, back to the lawsuit. Because we hadn't been served yet, we decided to have a little fun and do what is perhaps the greatest friendly Geordie's gag in history, because we hadn't been handed the documents we are on the elevator up to mark o'brien legal to ask to be served because it's been a week exactly and the press knows all about what i've done wrong i, but I don't let's find out i serve you here with with the uh, originating application uh-huh the statement claim and the steps. oh thanks so much and oh no so we've been served and what they gave us, in my honest opinion, is another whiny crock of shit that was... Does he actually have to... With... So he's been sued a million fucking times. Does he actually ever have to even defend himself or does it get thrown out pretty quickly? Because this man has collected more lawsuits than I have Pokemon cards at this point from the feelings he's hurt. Yeah, he's had to defend a few times. Okay, because like I, I I've seen the sheer number of them, and it is overwhelming. But I also know quite a few of them get thrown out. Like even in the description of this one, one is being thrown out. So I was just wondering if he ever even had to actually go defend himself, or if they eventually just 
drop it. Defamation in Australia is a mess. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't know Australian law, so I, I couldn't tell you. He had to say sorry and edit a video and then pay a $100,000 cost once? Holy fuck. Jeepers. He's a tier one trio. delusional and paranoid readings of silly jokes but had straight out factual errors like mistaking their own client John Barillaro for being a federal politician instead of a state politician absolute amateur, amateur. For Americans that's like lawyers acting for DeSantis or some other governor thinking he's president just embarrassingly stupid mistakes for a normal person let alone lawyers not much happens for about a day then on the 4th of June 2021, my producer Christo has walked back from uni. Oh, I, I know this one. He was meeting our lawyer Mark that day, so he had the documents on him. Yet on the way back, he bumps into Barillaro yep. himself, attempted to hand back the documents to tell him about the mistake, you know, being listed as a federal politician. Barillaro basically took no notice. Then, only a few hours later... Was he filming under arrest? No, I'm allowed to film it. Though. No, I'm allowed to film it. No, you're not. Could, you're under arrest. Could you I'm film allowed this? to film it. Could you film this, Mum? You can film it. That's okay. okay. But you're not allowed to. Yeah. I'm not allowed to. Oh, God. No, you can take my, no, 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 you can take my phone. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Jeff Danger just rolled up in the background over there. <laughs> yeah, this was a big clip when it came out. What's happening? They're they're just fighting him. Run off with evidence. Okay? Who are you doing this? You are with you. Jesus Christ. What the f This is bizarre. This is not Australia. Yeah, it's Mark Davis. Have you got the number? You hurt, you hurt a 51 year old woman. You knocked me over. I tripped over. over. You killed my dog. No, I tripped over. Old. Okay. No, you did not. Yeah, you pushed yeah. away. You pushed no, me no, down. No, no, you were assaulted. I tripped over. You that assaulted me. You assaulted okay. me. You, no, just, just, you just assaulted me. You I've got did. witnesses. We told I've you to hand over the phone. I have got witnesses. You handed it to her. I tripped over you. You pushed That's me what happened. down in my own home. No, I didn't. You you if you're you tripping that easily, you're in the wrong so line of work. Seems I've made enemies of politicians, lawyers, and now the police. Christo was arrested by the terror police, specifically the fixated persons unit, charged with four counts of stalking and intimidation. So we're now facing criminal charges and a defamation suit. We raise a million dollars in legal funds, which we're still using to this day. Thank you so much. Weeks after the arrest, New South Wales is plunged into lockdown and I know from how much time I had to spend on it, instead of focusing on his job as Deputy Premier during a crisis, Barilaro is spending a significant amount of his time preparing his defamation suit against a YouTuber. Even Logan it's far more important, had the obviously. To back out of that. Barillaro even goes on television to spread lies about his involvement with the fixated persons unit, making the insane denial that he had anything to do with the arrest. Did you ask for the fixated person, uh, persons investigation unit to be involved in the arrest of Jordan Shanks's uh, employee, Christo Lanka? Absolutely not. Uh, rubbish again. Rubbish. You know, they, <laughs> want to, they want to pitch it a particular way to get community support uh, from, uh, uh, from their social community. Uh, they use whatever means to, to misrepresent the truth. Uh, and again, right. I'll leave that up to the police. They'll, 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 they'll deal with all of this in due course. Right, but just to clarify, so you had no role in, in that particular unit being but Tom, involved? Tom, I've already in... said, I've actually made it clear. I've actually made it clear, Tom. I've well, then just say it. Uh, okay. Uh, now, yeah, it's, no, now it's now it's for certain. That question is an indictment on your level of journalism. I then what? release a video that criticizes... What? <laughs> 
I'm always so blown away by that take. How dare you ask me a question that's not just boilerplate, easy to respond to. You're, you're bad. You suck. Your journalism's bad. Please keep feeding me softballs. I can't think for myself. You're putting me on the back foot. You're, fuck you. Is he crying? I don't know. John Barilaro's eyes are always tearing up, it looks like. I don't know. His feelings are just perpetually hurt. If it's a, a rainy day outside, he cries. If it's a sunny day, he cries because it's too sunny. Like, I don't know. He just seems like a really sensitive guy. At least from everything I've seen from him. He's the resub jumper cables. The guy looks like he got... Well, I mean, in defense of John Barilaro, he literally did kind of get cucked by extension because this fucking idiot put his personal residence up <laughs> as an Airbnb so Friendly Geordies went and had sex there. Like, his his estate got cucked. So, of course, he's going to be sad forever. Thanks to the resub condor. criticizes the police's response and shockingly, I know you're not going to believe this, proves that the guy that complained to the police had something to do with the police being involved in Christo's arrest. Always the one you least suspect. Because of this video, the police asked the court to find me in criminal contempt and launch an application for a suppression order. That's right, the police try to get another criminal prosecution on top of the charges against Christo. Thankfully, it doesn't go so well for the cops. They end up withdrawing the application and paying both Christo and my legal costs of over $20,000. Hey, but Christo's boy. criminal charges still hang over him and my defo case is still ongoing. During this time, Barilaro also decided to publicly announce his intention to resign from politics, basically saying, I forced him to resign. The defamation case definitely playing a big part of this. Um, you, God, that's I don't so know good. How many of you can, can endure uh, what I've endured on online. I feel for young men and women, young boys and girls, that get bullied on social media. I feel for them. <laughs> Because as a, as a Bro, you are you are literally the most powerful person in the region, and you're crying about YouTubers making fun of you so much that you're quitting your job. That is the weakest, softest shit of all time. Actual 14-year-olds get bullied harder than you do, and you know what they do? Continue on and move forward. You're the fucking most powerful politician in the region and you curl up into the little fetal position suckling your thumb because a YouTuber called you a greasy scrotum. That is wild. That is fucking wild. Holy shit. You know what? I actually don't even think it's the mean words that Jordy says against him. I really think when Jordy's fucked at his house because this stupid idiot put his, Airbnb, or his actual home up for the Airbnb, I think that's what broke him. I think that, like, actually broke his whole soul. I think that was just, like, this big eureka moment where it's like, wow, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> and he couldn't handle the, like, the realization. Like, the self-reflection was too much. Overwhelming. Thanks for the 10 gift subs, Nathan. Appreciate that, man. Thanks to the resub Hess in the Tier 1 Cam in Tier 1 Wiki. In the bits paladin. Uh, you know, uh, someone that's been around the traps, a 49 year old man that's uh, played it rough and tough. I rough and tough, huh? It's made it very difficult for me. As all this is going on, in order to understand how this bizarre and overtly political prosecution came about, Christo's lawyers start issuing subpoenas to Barilaro staffers. His chief of staff, Siobhan Hamblin, seems to rid herself of certain documents and becomes completely uncontactable by the court or lawyers. It's a pretty serious thing to do, ignoring a court, so the magistrate floats issuing a possible arrest warrant. Until oh. just in time, her lawyers make contact and she's eventually brought in. That would have been huge, though. That would have been huge. Barrister Emmanuel Kirkusherian. During the cross examination, Hamblin admits that she got rid of documents from her possession, documents pertaining to Christo's arrest, after she'd already been subpoenaed. 
We never got those documents. And Hambler never got any punishment for blatantly hiding from a subpoena. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, during this time, I'm also fighting a defamation case brought by Barilaro. I put in an application to have it heard by a jury, something pretty common sense that you'd think you'd automatically be entitled to, right? Well, Barilaro opposed the jury, wanting the case Aww. to be heard by a judge only, with his legal team's reasoning be it would be too hard to organise with COVID. Ironically, John was in charge of the COVID roadmap to ending the lockdown in New South Wales. <laughs> and on the same day his legal team were opposing a jury on those grounds, John was publicly flagging his intention to open up New South Wales ASAP. I lost my application for a jury despite that and was ordered to pay oh, costs to no. John Barilaro's lawyers for daring to even ask. Now, ready to hear oh the most mind-bogglingly illogical what? challenge that we faced during the defo case. One of the things that John was suing me for was saying that he had lied to Parliament. Yet because of parliamentary privilege, basically English law from the 17th century designed to protect politicians' freedom of speech from the King of England getting in your face, in Australia, nothing said in Parliament can be examined by a court. For Americans, Parliament is like Congress. That means... I'm unable to present a transcript in which we believe John lied to Parliament in order to mount my defence. John brings a suit against me and then hides behind special parliamentary protections only afforded to him. So my legal team launches an application oh, shit, to strike out that brain. claim, opposed again by Barilaro, who fights tooth and nail to keep that claim in and keep his special protections that prevent his own words from being examined in court. And guess what? We lose. The judge rules that it would be more unfair to deprive Barilaro of the right to vindicate his reputation. What? <laughs> what is that stance? Than to make it impossible just for blatant me to corruption. defend myself. So I'm basically stuck in... That is... That, that needs to be a high, highly scrutinized ASAP. That is so wild. Holy shit. God damn. Imagine still being bound by a 1700s ruling to protect a politician from saying something stupid in Parliament. Oh my god. Thanks to Tier 1 Han and the Prime Andy and the Resub Zero and the Gift Sub Han. He literally said he can defend himself, but not you. I know. I know. Court with no jury of my peers, a judge that doesn't know the first thing about social media. And I can say that because at one point he was asking for someone to explain to him what tagging is. Uh, well, I mean, that's confusing. That I can't no, that's defend tough. myself tough to wrap your head so around. it's already an automatic loss for me because my opponent, the man who brought the lawsuit, is protected by a British law from the 17th century. Oh, yeah. And all the while, I'm being surveilled by a dedicated strike force on behalf of John Barilaro. I hadn't even been firebombed yet, yet someone thought I hadn't suffered enough. So I entered court-ordered mediation with Barilaro with this knowledge, and we come to a deal. I say sorry for hurting your feelings, pay the cost to his lawyers for the jury and parliamentary privilege, strike oh. out applications that I had already had to pay to them because I lost those, and I stopped selling merch that depicts Barilaro as a scrotum. And in exchange, he drops the defo case against me. In the end, Ugh. it was a phenomenal deal for me considering the circumstances because Barilaro didn't get a cent from me and I only had to pay what I would have even if I stayed in the suit. That is pretty unheard of in defamation. Yeah, really. but you'd still like a, a bigger W conclusion where once again Barilaro left in tears on the courtroom floor shaking his fist at the clouds. Damn you, I'm not a greasy scrotum, Jordies. But I mean, yeah. All things considered, this was probably the best he could have hoped for. Defamation cases are pretty much rigged in Australia. For a defendant to come out with not even one cent of damages to be paid to the complainant, that's like winning the running man. It doesn't happen. It's almost as if Barilaro didn't want me mounting my other defences. You know, those that weren't stopped by a 17th century shield. It was like he had me on the hook, and then he threw me back out to sea.
Yeah, Barry Lara wasn't just suing me. He was also suing Google for daring to host my videos on YouTube. And oh, very Google smart. What a good play. Deal, so the case is still set to go ahead in March of 2022. In late December of 2021, I released a video detailing that I had found an Ashley Madison account linked to John Barillaro's email address and personal <laughs> details. You know the website that had the slogan, That's so Life good. is short, have an affair. It was hacked a few years ago. I yes. swear to God. That was huge. The rest of this argument, you couldn't make this up. That, I, I, I can't wait for the reveal, but I just have to once again chime on that. With that Ashley Madison hack, I don't know how many of you remember that. That caused like actual hysteria for maybe like a week. Like on Facebook, like the old gentlemen, they were breaking down like, how could this have happened? The internet is a secure place. My life is ruined. I can't believe it. Like absolutely having this nuclear meltdown because all of their shit was now exposed. It was amazing. It was fucking amazing. Ashley Madison was a place where married men went for cheating on their wife or something. It, that was the whole shtick. That was the whole basis of the site. The username of the account was John Loves to Leak. The video has been taken down. That's by beautiful. In That's a beautiful American name. American subs probably still could be able to see it. It's the vid with the lick emoji as the title. It's very funny. I wish I could go more into it now. Moving on. It's now early 2022. Christo's criminal trial is fast approaching, and so is John's defamation trial. Yet, very, very strangely, just a bit over a week before John's defamation trial is set to begin, police drop the charges against Christo oh. and pay his legal costs. Again, almost like the police were working to benefit John so he could have a bargaining chip in his defo case. Then, another strange thing happens, perhaps the most tragic of them all, just days before Google are set to go against John, they drop all their legal defences, leaving John with the legal equivalent of a layup. He now couldn't lose and the trial would just be a question of how much money he'd get. This was completely illogical on Google's part, and to me it was very, very suspicious. There was no logical strategic reason for them to drop their defences, so this results in John's lawyers being able to spend the entire trial getting away with whatever bullshit they like, repeatedly smearing me as a racist, misunderstanding jokes, misrepresenting the timeline of the videos to make it seem like John didn't react first, dramatically overstating to the point that it was comical how much ad rev YouTube videos make. And worst of all, John wasn't asked point blank any difficult questions. And I'm not there to defend myself or give a true account of what actually happened. Most importantly for John, he got away with this narrative. I was driven out of politics by this horrible That's racist, such a good narrative much though. Much more powerful than me YouTube men. And Google made so much money from his awful videos. Yes, one of the richest corporations really needed a few thousand dollars Australian in ad rev. That that's, I am so, like, to be fair, though, I get the frustration from Jordy's here, but the fact that's the narrative he ran with is perhaps the best outcome you could have hoped for aside from him losing more money. He now just looks like such a bitch. He went on record and then on TV to cry about being bullied by you and cited you as the reason he stepped down. That is, like, the fattest fucking W you could hope for. Like, that's amazing. I can't get over that, that that's actually the, like what he is saying the reason is for him stepping down. I just think that's perfect. Like, that's the perfect outcome. Yeah, I'll watch the police chase when it's over. I don't like to watch them live just in case of toss. Thanks for you, sub Octopony and damn boy. That's why my videos were kept up. Pure commercial interest. I'm single-handedly keeping Google afloat, guys. That's the meat of the case. The reason John would be awarded damages centers around the claim that he was forced to resign because of my videos and the fact that Google kept them up. Keep that in mind. After a few days, the trial finishes. On the 6th of June, 2022, the judgment comes out and awards John over $700,000 in damages. And not only that, the judge refers me to the registrar for consideration of possible criminal contempt charges. Mostly because of the video I made that detailed the John Loves to Lick Ashley Madison account. That was apparently criminally intimidating to John. Oh, but John, John getting a strike force on us wasn't. So well, I mean, hey, 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 hey. 
John cheating on his wife is so much more traumatizing than a young man and his family being attacked by the counterterrorism goofballs here, right? Like, you can't even put them on the same playing field. An affair is far scarier. And and John, I mean, John wears his heart on his sleeve, man. Like, you, you can't take that kind of stress. You, you don't get it. You don't get it. So throughout the course of this ordeal, John got away with his chief of staff deliberately ignoring subpoenas, having a police unit surveil us, using police to bring vexatious charges to use as a bargaining chip in a separate civil trial, opposing a jury, hiding behind parliamentary privilege. My great crime has stayed the same throughout this ordeal, and it just might be why I was firebombed, which is... Being an annoying pest to a lot of very powerful people in Australia. So John had his big win. But one thing he didn't tell the court, what his lawyers didn't tell Justice Rarys, or us for that matter, was that during the trial, John had already had a few very, very lucrative career moves lined right up. In fact, better paid than his job as Deputy Premier. Barely a week after the judgment came out, the New South Wales government announced that it was appointing John Barillara to be New oh. South Wales Trade Commissioner in New York. Hey, congrats. A half a million dollar a year taxpayer funded job that John himself created while he was in office. This wasn't even the worst thing Barillara had done that year, but created by far the largest controversy of his career. A parliamentary inquiry was set up to figure exactly how how John got that job and I can't really go into everything here but suffice to say it was pretty damning. One of his ex-staffers alleged that as early as 2018 John had said that that big New York job was the job for when I get the f out of this place. New South Wales Parliament then questioned John about holy the timing shit. of his holy shit. Stating, under oath that he had only decided to resign days before he announced it. New South Wales Parliament then presented Puffles, an affidavit from his best friend in tier one against me that contradicted that evidence. In that meeting, you were yet to decide you were resigning at that point. No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. As I said, if the events of Friday didn't occur, yeah. I would have stayed on for who knows how long. This is your outline of evidence in your court case. And can you just read out the highlighted? Yeah. I have therefore made a decision to retire from college and do not want to face another election. And what's the date on that down the bottom? Um, the I can't September. read. <laughs> After this appearance of Parliament, John pulled out of all future appearances, citing mental health issues. Yeah, Mind you, no, no, this no, is no, after him begging to tell his side of the story. Uh, but the upper house won't, won't call me to the hearing because they don't want to hear the truth. So give me the opportunity in a hearing, in real life time, live for everybody to get the same information at the same time and we can go through this process. I'm planning on maybe doing a dive into that later in the year if you guys want, but this whole matter is still under investigation by New South Wales Parliament and was referred to the Independent Commission Against Corruption. John was also under investigation by the police. I promise to explain this to you. Clearly, John wasn't doing too well with all the attention his new job got him because when cameramen went to film him one night regarding this scandal, this happened. I wonder if that was the woman he went on, met on Ashley Madison, or if it was his wife. There's really no telling. Oh, this is the cameraman! It was a hey, long come on now. and- Please. The cameraman wins this. <laughs> John took the most damage. It, John was the one that hit the blast zone here. Cameraman's got 30 pounds of fucking iron on him. And he is still just manhandling John with one arm. It was a long and winding road to get to that point. But we got there. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we found our fire bomber. Dodgy cameraman Matt Costello. <laughs> so bitter about Barillaro's epic beatdown, he had to prove himself by taking down the man the courts claimed to attack Barillaro. For the Yanks watching, that was a joke. The cameraman's gear was broken and he was quite injured from the exchange and couldn't work for a while. So we're now using our legal fund to pay for a legal action against John Barillaro on behalf of the camera. Let's go. <laughs> That's so good. Days ago, John's charges were dropped oh. on the grounds of mental health. How? How is that an excuse? Wait, what? <laughs> Does that work in Australia? So let's say, let's say assault and battery, whatever. Like you show, like you show evidence, like, hey, this is really taking a toll on my mental health. Like I'm really stressed about this, and then be like, oh my god, we're we're so fucking sorry. Holy shit. Okay, we'll drop the case, please. Uh, take all the time you need to recover from the 
you know, the mental burden of this whole ordeal. Oh my god, wow. Is that just, like, something you can actually do? Like, obviously, assault charges are going to be mentally draining, even to, well, especially to the super sensitive goofball Barolaro. But is that a real defense? Like, <laughs> my mental health is suffering from this, please drop it. And they'll be like, oh, yes. Well, now that you've said that. It's like in Pirates of the Caribbean with parlay. If you shout parlay, they just have to stop everything. No, not a thing. He's just super corrupt. Okay, thank God. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not happy to hear about the corruption, but I'm glad to hear this isn't like a real tactic you can employ. I think the Prime Jelly in the Tier 1 Whack in the Tier 1 Paladin. Quite strangely, the prosecutor barely objected. We'll soon be releasing a video of the strange circumstances surrounding the original delay in police charging Barilaro and the conduct of the prosecution in the case, ultimately resulting in his charges being dropped, suffice to say. Some pretty interesting and concerning information is set to come out. But you'd think this saga would end there, right? No. In the six months after John had quit politics, he actually worked another job before landing the Trade Commissioner role. I don't know how he managed to do it, but this one is even more scandalous. Executive Director of large Sydney property development company Coronation Property Co. In August last year, we released an investigation into this developer, which detailed never before published links between them and one of the most violent crime organisations in all of Australian Oof. history, the Alamedine crime family, who are in no way suspects of the firebombing. No, not them. I'm sure they all have very credible alibis. Wow, that's we terrifying. We that Andy DeHass, the now former secretary and director of the construction wing of Coronation, MN Builders, he was charged with kidnapping in 2009 after an extremely violent incident where a man was chased down, kidnapped, held against his will and bashed by a group of bikies, one of whom is now on trial for murder. These charges were only dropped after Holy the victim fuck. seemingly disappeared. We also have revealed photos of Nahas with high-ranking members of the Alamedean crime family. All that info can be found in articles on our website, all the full video. Oh and my John God. Barilaro, after being essentially the leader of the state, went to work for these people. I told you New South Wales was rotten to the core. See how one stupid beef about an accent and the word bruz snowballed into a massive saga that made me the enemy of just about every elite in the state. Police, politicians, organised crime. I really should have chosen one to be friends with so I'd have a little bit of cover, but... Oh yeah, also... There was a really loud, violent cop that arrested Christo and assaulted Hey, that's the guy girlfriend. I said. We did a video that detailed some pretty strange behavior of his in a courtroom, linked in the description. But we're not done. You know how earlier I said New South Wales is the gambling capital of the world? Yeah. The gambling lobby came after me with a criminal prosecution. How fun. Essentially, my producer, the Christo, gambling a firmly ill whistleblower, a man called Troy Stoles. Troy used to work for the gambling lobby. An entity called Clubs New South Wales. It was Troy's job to make sure venues were complying with anti-money laundering regulations. Spoiler alert, Arnold Schwarzenegger survives Running Man. Sorry, that was the wrong spoiler. These venues weren't complying and it's very easy to launder money through poker machines in New South Wales. Check out this video we did with Boy Boy about it. So Troy leaked to federal parliament the fact that 95% of Clubs New South Wales venues weren't complying with money laundering regulations. Clubs New South Wales sued him, drained him of nearly a million dollars in seemingly never ending lawsuits. Troy had to sell his house. He then developed Jesus. terminal cancer. So Christo interviewed him about the ordeal. Apparently that interview was criminally intimidating, enough for Clubs New South Wales to bring a private prosecution against Troy and I. So now I've made even more enemies, the gambling lobby and anyone that would use them to launder money. Sorry, after filming this, there was a few updates on this front. Holy Clubs shit. New South Wales fired their CEO, and then days later, John Barillaro tried to become Clubs New South Wales' new CEO. And Clubs New South Wales rejected him. By the way, this came out on the same day John was saying in court that he was too mentally ill to face his assault charges, but well enough to run Clubs New South Wales, one of the most scrutinised well, yeah. jobs in the country right now. Well, the thing is, like, assault charges are a scary thing. That's like a mental ewe. Like, that's yucky. Like, that's, oh, that doesn't make me feel good. 
but being in charge of a massive gambling uh, company that's a that's a yippee kind of feeling like that's two very different sides of like the mental spectrum here so I can totally understand him not wanting to go to court to face the assault charges. That is very stressful. This this is pleasure. This is fun. So I get it. I, I, I get it, John. Don't you see? All these people are kind of just one group. They're the Avengers of dodgy c And perhaps a less hilarious update. Just a few days ago, the charges against Troy were dropped. And Troy's civil suits were settled with clubs New South Wales. And so were mine. This is breaking news. My criminal charge has been dropped. So well done, me. And Troy, I suppose. The lawyers, you know, they did their bit, but I think, you know, the big player was definitely me more of this suit. This video is going on for a real long time. We also did some shit about cocaine, the opposition leader, $100 million security contracts in Papua New Guinea. Uh, can't be go over that though. Watch it in your own time. What else? Uh, allegations that the former defence minister went all eyes wide shut in Parliament and House prayer room. Uh, and numerous and journalists and politicians publicly admitting their desire to have me thrown in jail. The seventh richest man in Australia threatening to sue me. Numerous other property developers and dodgy bears. I have a longer enemies list than Richard Nixon. So despite having my suspicions, I'm still not completely sure as to who done it. But enough of listing enemies, it's now time for my friends list. First of all, sorry to my neighbours and landlord and future apology to whoever finds my corpse. It's going to be messy. I'm not going down without a fight. Big thank <laughs> you, that's, boy boy. that's like actually fucking terrifying. Like that's, he's making light of it. But the enemies that he has listed here are actually fucking horrifying. Like I can't believe he's still staying in Australia, honestly. I really can't. So for those that don't remember the situation, I'll I'll quickly let you know. His house got firebombed, but it was actually the second attempt. So they initially firebombed his fucking neighbors thinking it was his house. And then when they realized it wasn't his house that they fucking firebombed, they came back to try and finish the job. And like he mentioned, the house didn't even have smoke alarms. So like he literally probably would have just died if he was actually home at the time. Because it, it would have been when he was asleep. And the enemies he's listed here in their connections are very serious. I don't know how he's he's sitting here and being like okay about it and lucid. What what a man's man. Wow. Be pyro cynical, moist critical, Isaac Butterfield, Michael West, oh, Kevin weird. Rudd, Chris Minns, Michael Daly, Peter Cronow, my lawyers, and the people that house me in the meantime. And most importantly, you, the viewer. No, actually, just my patrons. You guys really helped us in our darkest time and kept the business running. Everything we make from Patreon goes right back to paying the staff and making production possible. So you literally kept us afloat. But for the rest of you, chuck us a few bucks you get early access to videos extra content and the more we have the bigger we get the bigger the truth bombs the bigger the fire bombs that get hurled back in retaliation oh and a massive thank you to everyone's favorite russian australian youtuber i did a thing for kidding out my new security check out that video. <laughs> There are too many people to thank for their support, so sorry if I missed you, but I'd be here all day if I went through all of them. But as you can clearly see from this video, I really, really, really need to learn to shut the fuck up sometimes. But we all know that's not gonna happen. The reason I was off for so long, by the way, I wasn't off for patrons, they still got videos every week, was because I thought we'd stop to assess the threat level and get some more information. It's been months way, and I still know Prime about Prado. as much about the firebombing as the day it happened. So I got tired of waiting and not making videos for you guys. Plus I have some considerable gambling problems that I need to get money for. <laughs> Just another little Australian joke. Tune in next week because even though we haven't been posting, we've been working and I think you're in for a treat if you enjoy the rug being swept from under the feet of fat politicians. On that note, I'd also like to officially announce my new stand-up show for the year.
God, that was so fucking good. I can't believe they can't find- well, I can. After everything I've heard today, I can absolutely That's believe right. how they haven't Rude. found the fire bomber. Definitely not Bruz, didn't say that. Coming to a city near you if you live in Australia, hopefully. But hey, you never know. If enough of you high flyers in LA, that's right, Shreveport, Louisiana, subscribe, I just might catch a plane there and make the groundbreaking cultural observation that Burger King is called Hungry Jack's here. What up with that? Anyway, get just your tickets now King. from FriendlyJordies.com and see Bruce live on stage before the court takes it down or a gang takes me out. To end the video, though, I thought I'd enlist the help of you fellow TikTokers, yeah? get this going on TikTok. At this point, I'm not sure the police can solve it alone, so make the firebombing like one of those murders you guys love to live through before you sleep. <laughs> How do I know who did this? Everyone in town's a suspect. <laughs> well, I couldn't possibly solve this mystery. Can you? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. I mean, yeah. It's my job, right? And to get you started, I'll give you a clue. Exclusive, definitely real CCTV footage from the night of the fire. Like and subscribe, Big Vid's coming. What's cold one? Oh, God. <laughs> Please share and comment below. That was so Amazing. fucking good. Uh, hey Jordan, man. I am like I genuinely know, concerned for his safety I though. Too much to drink the other night, and I was kind of pissed off about you stealing my underwear. So thanks for being so funny. I myself just to head over your place and. And roll down though. But you know, I didn't know it was a fire. I just thought it to make a funny sound and some pretty colors. But yeah, it turns out it did a lot of damage. So. I'm sorry, man, but, like, if anything, I think you deserved it. All right, have a good one, mate. Call me. Fuck, man. Jesus Christ. He has so many enemies in power over there. Thanks for your subweb. I had no idea the list would be that long. Fuck. Dude, better keep moving. I'm sure he's got some kind of plan to stay safe. There's got he's gotta. I'm sure he does. He's a real journalist. It, yes, this he is a real journalist, a dying breed. <clears throat> He needs a bunker. What he actually needs is a security team. Like, legitimately. He's at that point where he legitimately needs a security team. Poor choice of words. Oh, about the dying breed thing? He's a part of a nearly extinct breed, but the ones that aren't extinct are very powerful, and they're usually around for hundreds of years. Is what I meant to say. The problem as well is people who hear real journalism but don't like the message and reject it. See, like, I don't really subscribe to that belief. Because if you look at some of, like, the real journalists that do great work like Jordy's, they are very well received by actual people. Not politicians and not the elite. Like, that's how you know it's the sign of, like, good journalism. I never really see pushback. When, you, when you're met with, like, a real journalist. That's assuming it's a rational person. Does, this is a question to the Australians in chat. Is there just normal people that don't like Jordy's reporting? Because I don't know how you can take an issue with it. He literally just dumps, like, the fattest, hottest facts and presents them in an entertaining way. Like, maybe you don't like the jokes, maybe you don't like the skits. I could, I could see people not liking that. But, like, the actual information is... It's pretty bulletproof. I don't know how you get mad or reject it. Like, as a normal person. Obviously, the people in power fucking hate it. But I just don't know how a normal person would, like, reject it. Older people. Mm, I guess maybe. 
I could possibly see that. And thank you again for that camp. I really appreciate the fat drop again, man. Thank you for the generosity. Conservatives hate him. I, I, I don't think you're actually Australian. Like a John Barilaro is not a conservative. So it, would, it wouldn't even be the conservatives that would hate him. Uh, like, I think you're just way off the mark. Yes, he is. Is he? Wait, what? Am I misremembering? No, I don't think so. Yeah, no, he's part of the Liberal Party. What are you talking about? John Barilaro, former Australian politician, served as the 18th Deputy Premier of New South Wales, leader of the New South Wales Division of the National Party of 2021. Um, and then I just saw it. I just scrolled a little too far. I'm just going to control F. Yeah. 2016, Barlaro was elected unopposed as leader of the National Party in New South Wales following the resignation of Troy Grant and following the resignation of two other people as the leader of the New South Wales Liberal Party and led the Nationals to form the Liberal National Coalition in whatever ministry. That's their conservative party. Oh, what the fuck? Oh. <laughs> oh. What the, what the fuck? Why, why does it have the different name? Why is it fucking upside down? It's like driving on the opposite side of the road. What the fuck? That doesn't make any point. That makes no sense. What, what in tarnation? Oh. I had no idea. Oh, okay. Well, then <laughs> what is the... That's... That just blew my fucking mind. All right. Thank you again for the fat generosity camp. I appreciate it, man. And thanks to the recent Brew, Pierre, and Saturn. Hope you're well, Brew. And thank you for five years subs, Mitch. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, camp. You're such a fucking sweetheart. Make sure to smash that like button and thumbs up, ring the bell, tell your mom I said hi. Yeah, that's about it. See ya.